morning. I'm Pastor Scott Grolke and with Pastor Melly Momo, we welcome you to Macomb Wesley United Methodist Church. We welcome you for prayer, for music, for a children's moment, for scripture and sermon to remind us we are not alone. If you appreciate this experience, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. Today, we encourage our staff, musicians, worship leaders, technicians, members, and friends to remember the story of Matt Redman, a worship leader at Soul Survivor Church, Watford, England. The church was young and growing. The pastor at the time still sensed something was missing in all the excitement, something authentic, something at the heart. And so he removed all electronics, the PA system, the instruments, and the people gathered for a season with only their voices. It became a time of reflection where Matt Redman could write these words for a song entitled, Heart of Worship. When the music fades, all is stripped away and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within to the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Today is not about you. It's not about me. Macomb Wesley Church is not gathered in a building. We're gathered in the simple presence of Jesus Christ. In his spirit, we now prepare for worship. Good morning, I am Meli Momo. I welcome you to this morning service. I will invite you now to the call to worship. We begin this time as lonely, empty, and frightened. We begin with frustration, anger, sorrow, and grief. So we gather all that we have and all that we feel to this time of prayer. Lord, from our fear and paralysis, we need to reconnect with you. From times of spiritual delinquency, we know our needs of you. From our broken promises, we need your forgiveness. From our sense of inadequacy, we need to know you still love us. Come to us by your quiet, gentle spirit. Come. Hello, everyone. Please join with me and sing as we reflect on the true reason we worship. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth, that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you, 
It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I've made lots of mistakes. I'm thinking right now about mistakes I make when I might be writing, maybe writing a letter, writing a story. I misspell a word. I want to change a word. I get out my eraser, except on this pencil, the eraser is gone. I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but I can always add an eraser to it, and that'll help correct that mistake. I can get another pencil, which has a brand new eraser on it, or I can just buy a big eraser and have that handy for all the mistakes I make. But in addition to that, I, um, I can think of, or not in addition to, but in place of an eraser for those kinds of mistakes, I think of Jesus as being an eraser. The neat thing about Jesus being our eraser is that he's everywhere. I don't have to carry a something special in my pocket, and it never runs out. An eraser will run out, but not Jesus. If we make a mistake like um, saying some things we shouldn't say, sassing our parents, not doing what they want us to do, we need to ask Jesus to forgive our mistakes. And I would hope that you would think of Jesus as maybe an eraser. He's always there. All I have to do is ask him to forgive my mistake, or another word for mistake would be a sin. I hope you'll think about that this next week. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you that you are always there. You don't run out. And you will always forgive us for the things that we do wrong. I ask a special blessing on our children. Give each of us the strength that we need each day. In your name, dear Jesus, amen.
let us pray father in the name of your son jesus christ i give you praise this morning i thank you for it's another day that you have graced us to come to you in worship and thanksgiving of all that you are to us thank you for your presence thank you for your grace and love thank you for your forgiveness now lord i pray that you reach out to each one of us as we gather to worship you reach out to our needs lord for those who are not feeling well we ask for that grace of healing to touch them in the name of jesus lord we lift up the first responders the medical personnel we lift them all in your hands and asking for your protection lord to be with them during this difficult time be with our leaders in their decision making inspire them lord with your wisdom in the name of jesus bless our country bless your children and those who have gone astray we ask that lord you send your angels to help them to know you lord so that they will be able to accept you as their lord and savior as well Lord, we thank you so much for your grace and love. For you are always with us, no matter what. Thank you for your presence. And hear now our prayers as we lift our voices, praying the way your son, Jesus Christ, continue to teach us. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'd like to remind you to send in your offerings and thank you for all that we are doing. May the Lord bless you abundantly. So we we'll remind you to send in your to send your offering and tithe by mail as well as online. You can always give on our website. And thank you for that. Let us bless our offerings and tithe. Lord, in the name of your Son Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for what we are able to give. It's out of what you have blessed you have blessed us with when we ask that you bless it again more for your work and also bless the hand that is given in the name of Jesus we give you praise amen our Old Testament reading is from Psalm 91 verse 1 to 4 i'm reading from the new revised standard version you who live in the shelter of the most high who abide in the shadow of the almighty will say to the lord my refuge and my fortress my god in whom i trust for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler.
New Testament scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, beginning in verse 15. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Verse 18, I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. Verse 25, I've said these things to you while I'm still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Does it sometimes feel like the training wheels never came off? You remember your childhood. Now, if you have children or grandchildren, the training wheels offer a stability when they're learning to ride. I remember the process with my daughters. After a year with the tricycle came the bike with training wheels. I would gently hold one end of the handlebar and guide the bike forward. The wheels began their first turning, then faster and faster, then letting go, releasing them under pedal power, the training wheels in full contact. A few weeks later, the adjustment with less reliance on the wheels than the removal. I would walk alongside them, then release. If the bike went over, I was there to check the skinned knee Try it again. You're okay. Keep your balance. It's a practical illustration of the Spirit of Christ. Gently, carefully, He walks beside us as we pedal forward in faith. Jesus talked about it in John's Gospel. He was near the end of His ministry. He would soon give up His life and be absent. But He would never leave them. He would never really abandon them because. His spirit would be with them. Have you felt abandoned? Did you feel abandoned with the death of a family member or friend who you needed to believe they were still there, near, somewhere, somehow? Did you feel abandoned when you hurt someone and needed forgiveness? Did you feel it when someone hurt you? Did you feel abandoned? in a crowd ever, still with a lonely ache. Did you feel abandoned while social distancing in a pandemic? Did you feel it with an emptiness in your soul? Did you feel it when something would, was missing at the end of the day? I believe Jesus knew about loneliness. Isaiah predicted the Messiah would be a despised, rejected man of sorrow. Jesus said, foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head, Matthew 8. John in chapter 6 said, many disciples turned back and no longer went about with Jesus. So he asked the 12, do you also wish to go away? Matthew 27, 46, in the midst of crucifixion, Jesus cried, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus knew about loneliness. Last week, we talked about his promise to make a home for us. Today, he promises that until we arrive there, that he will never leave us abandoned. In John 14, he was near the end of his ministry. In physical form, he was leaving, but he would send another, just like him, his spirit. He told them 
to mark the time, mark the place, and wait. That reminded me of a story my dad told about two fishermen on the lake. They were in a small boat catching all kinds of fish. They'd reached their limit. One of them started up the motor and he said, now you mark this spot, we'll come right back here tomorrow. When they reached the dock, he said, how did you mark that spot we fished? The other said, well, I painted this X right here on the bottom of the boat. First fisherman said, you ninny, we might not get the same boat tomorrow. When Jesus was preparing to leave, he said to his friends, remember this moment. Mark my words, the spirit will come. The word he used was parakletos. It's a Greek word. He used it in an Aramaic word, but the Greek word is parakletos. It's a multidimensional word that means counselor, helper, advocate, comforter. You could think about the full range of biblical definitions for spirit. The spirit who breathed life into you and the universe, Genesis 1. A spirit, a friend who never leaves, John 14, 23. A spirit to fill and fulfill your soul, Luke 1, 15. A spirit to lead you into truth like Luke 12, 12 and John 14, 17. A spirit that comes from the Father, John 14, 26. An adoptive parent who will never leave you, John 14, 18. One who comforts in a time of grief, John 14, 26. One who remains with every follower, John 14, 17. One who brings joy and peace, Romans 14, 19. One who represents our needs to the Father, Romans 8, 26. One who motivates you to keep growing, 2 Peter 1, 21. One who judges the sin of the world, John 16, 9. A legal witness to the life of Jesus, John 14, 26. A defense attorney at your side in approaching the almighty bench, John 14, 16. Jesus said, wait, and the Paracletos will come. So the first disciples waited and the spirit came and still comes. At Pentecost, he came in tongues of fire, but for most of us, he comes as he did with John Wesley, with a warmed heart. He came with ecstatic visions. For most of us, he comes to clarify our self vision. He came with miraculous manifestations, but for most of us, he comes like he came the first time to earth, gently, unpredictably, unobtrusively. The other helper, the advocate comes to teach, guide, befriend, walking alongside, holding the handlebar as you pedal forward in faith. So what would you do in the next crisis without the spirit of Jesus? One of our hymns recalls the poetry of John Greenleaf Whittier, who suggests a tranquil mood, a gentle atmosphere for the spirit's approach. It's from a piece called The Brewing of Soma, in which Whittier rejected the emotionalism of some Christians who require an intoxication of the spirit. He disliked noisy and excited worship, and he was remembering Elijah, who did not find God in the wind, the earthquake, the fire, but in the still small voice. The hymn that includes Whittier's poetry is Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. And the stanza is this. Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our strivings cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. Jesus spirit comes fluttering, descending, winging his way among us, like the writer of Psalm 91 who said, 
You live in the shelter of the Most High. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. May you remember that the Holy Spirit is not discovered through magic formula and incantation. May you remember that his presence is the promise of Jesus, who said, I will not leave you desolate, but I will come to you. May you remember to be open to the Spirit's lessons in the book. May you remember in this crisis how the Spirit of Jesus has guarded, protected, watched over you. And may you remember a story from Catherine Marshall's book, The Helper. An art competition was held. The subject, peace. All kinds of paintings were submitted, a serene pastoral scene, a placid lake, an intimate cottage sketch with a family snug by the fireplace. Vistas of freshly fallen snow, a painting of a tranquil, windless dawn in a play of colors. But the painting selected by judges for first prize depicted the height of a raging storm Trees bent low under the lashing wind and driving rain. Lightning zigzagged across a threatening sky. In the center of the fury, the artist had painted a bird's nest in the fork of a tree where a mother bird, wings spread over her brood, waited serene, unruffled until the storm would pass. And so we pray. Spirit of Christ, come, wing your way into our hearts and minds. Give us, even in the midst of this crisis, your peace. Amen. Benediction today, I offer these words of affirmation. We are not alone.
We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And so may these words of affirmation go with you in this benediction of peace. We are not alone in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.